Sonia RV DJ, thank you so much for being here. Okay, you guys, happy place camping. Hello, hello. I am going to bring up Karen with Prairie Life. A lot of you have already met Karen, but Karen and I are going to be doing a collaboration. Hello. Hi, friends. Hello, Paula. How are you doing in the freezing cold? We have a saying, cold, hot, cold hands, warm heart. My, actually, my hands aren't even cold. Dang. <laughs> Warm hands, hot heart. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll come How up am I doing? Yeah, it's, it is, it's really cold. But I think everybody's getting it evenly. Everybody seems to be 10 or 15 degrees, like across North America. People are yeah. in shock everywhere. So yeah, I just have one question, like global warming, where are you? Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so everybody knows Karen and I live an hour apart and we are both Canadian prairie girls. We, if you've seen both of our channels, we each have a little bit of a different focus on what we present to everyone. But we are going to do some traveling together this year and we're going to have some stuff for both of our channels that will actually still be different even though we're going to collaborate together. I'm excited to travel with you, Karen. I'm really excited about it, too. I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Well, I mean, I'm thinking it might be good to have you to keep me under control, but then I have a feeling you're going to be a bad influence. I do have some experience in that area. <laughs> you guys will definitely get to see a whole other side of Karen during this collaboration. But because the borders are still shut down, we don't know how long it's going to be. And each of us can't do the traveling that we had planned. We are really going to focus on highlighting the things in the prairies. And you know what, Karen? I was going through some pictures today. And you know what? There's so much stuff that I have taken for granted. That's right. Absolutely. And the, um, like, I think that like I think that people just think of us as flat, right? Flat Saskatchewan. How fast mm -hmm. can you travel from one border to the other? Um, I have a question um, in my about section on on my YouTube page, and it says, uh, "What's your favorite Saskatchewan memory?" And one of the people that's in the chat tonight wrote, "Traveling from one border to the other." And then another one that's in the chat tonight wrote, um, "How flat it is." <laughs> so yeah. I think that I think that you and I have talked about this before. Like the highway is built to be uh, engineering, like the engineers are thinking, right? So they're going to build it the path of least resistance where it's the cheapest to build. So they're going to avoid hills. They're going to avoid lakes. They're going to avoid rivers. They're going to try and go as straight and as flat as possible. So unfortunately, if you've never turned right or left off the Trans-Canada Highway, the highway that goes mm -hmm. from one side of Canada to the other, you think it's flat and straight. Yeah. And, and yes, Crash the Wild, there actually are a couple ski hills out here. They're definitely not like the mountains, but me being not athletic, some of them are like too much for me. I'm like a, you know, the long cross country ones that are really slow sloped. Yeah. Or bunny hills. Yeah. You Those know, Crash, yeah, Crash the Wild, the difference between skiing at, say, Sunshine or, um, some of the other ones in, in Alberta or skiing at Whistler, this, the difference is, is that our slopes are like straight down and icy. They almost go to blue or black diamond right away. There's very little green around here. But when, you, when we go to, and we ski in, in Alberta or we ski in BC, we get onto those green runs and then there's like really good, really good snow, but we get a lot of icy snow that goes straight down. So you develop skills fast or you die. <laughs> Okay, let's start showing them some pictures, shall we? You bet. And you know, I had to start with this picture. Now, this is one of those things that when we see it, we go, oh, crap. <laughs> but it's actually really pretty because it looks like we have three suns, yeah. right? That's iconic. That's iconic. Yeah. So that is a sun dog. Karen, do you want to tell them what a sun dog is? Yeah, it's um the ice crystals in the air are reflect refract or reflect the the sun so the sun's in the middle and then what you see is kind of like a rainbow effect because of the ice crystals in the air it's it that's a really cold day if you're getting sun dogs yeah if you see sun dogs you know colder weather is in the future and that's why when i see them i'm like oh crap <laughs> And sometimes when you're driving, you get a glimpse of one, you look again, you're like, wait a minute, which one was the sun? 
<laughs> so I think that might be some of those things that we just get mostly in Canada that, that again, took for granted and forgot that others might not realize. Let me see. Oh, and you know, in our travels, we are definitely going to come across animals. We're going to show you guys some of the natural wildlife that's out here. I actually like hunting. I don't know if I'll be able to do that this fall. I need someone that hunts and has a registered rifle <laughs> to take me. <laughs> but um, I'm deer sausage. Moose sausage is amazing. Our moose that graze on the prairies, their meat actually tastes better than farther north with the trees. Because they eat grain. They eat grain all day. It's like finished beef. <laughs> it is amazing. Amazing. So I can't wait for that. Now, this is a picture that I actually had on my Facebook page two years ago. This is this is the McDonald's. You know when you go through McDonald's drive through and they ask you to pull ahead at a spot? Someone was literally sitting at the curbside mobile order spot with their skidoo in Saskatchewan. This picture is in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, and you know what? Us Canadians, we're rough and tough. Now, I sounded like an idiot when I took this picture. This picture I actually took in a bathroom stall in a local Walmart, and it says, your mother is probably a really nice lady. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the bathroom going, that is the nicest graffiti I have ever read in my whole life. <laughs> How Saskatchewan is that? It's very polite. <laughs> I, I laugh so hard. But you know what? I have pictures like this. These are places that when you go to northern Saskatchewan, you get to do some fishing on the lake. This is the scenery around you, and it is amazing. And we see loons and pelicans, and I want to capture a lot of that stuff for you guys this year. And you know what? I didn't know that I... I could take a decent picture. And the only pictures I've ever taken, Karen, that actually look really good are pictures of mushrooms. Like, I took this picture. Was it last summer or the summer before? Last summer? But I was on a hiking trail up way far north, up by the Narrows. And um, really there were yeah. so many different kinds of mushrooms. So, like, even that, something so simple around looks so pretty. Yeah. And this is now, believe it or not, when I realized what it was, I had to get the hell out of there. That's actually a beaver dam. And so you, when they're when it's in the spring and stuff and they have their babies and that you do not want to disturb them. They actually can be quite ferocious when they want when they're protective, like any mother is. But um, usually you see them a lot at the mouth of smaller rivers or in like pond ish areas. Um, but this is actually from the ground looking at the dam instead of from the water. I'm going to pick berries. I found chestnuts. Do you know we even had that in, in, in Saskatchewan? Yeah. Oh, so I we're going to show you the natural foods. We're going to have some wicked bonfires. Wicked. This is a picture that I took up north and I absolutely loved it. Like where the roots are coming out, like this is as raw as it gets. This is not your commonly toured places. This is the true beauty of the province that we live in. And this is some of the stuff that we want to share. I'm going to boat. I'm going to fish. Again, another shot from Northern Saskatchewan. This is our, our prairie, flower, prairie lily. Yeah. And it's illegal to pick them, but you go to some areas, there are so many of them. It's so pretty. You know, you're just you do, me doing stupid shit. Like this was me literally trying to pack up a tent, <laughs> squishing the air out and I lost my balance and fell on my face. How lucky for me, someone managed to capture that on a picture. But in Paula fashion, this is some of the stuff you're gonna see on my channel. <laughs> You know, and then there's those fields of gold. The flax is purple. We have the canola that's yellow, and the wheat is just amazing. And I, Karen, I do stuff like this, and this is so dumb. This was a really deep, deep culvert, but you should not stick your head in one because there's animals that live in them. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I hiked a little bit down the ditch and over and laid on top of it because I'd never seen a culvert so big and looked down. There was no animals in that one, but my sister took that picture from me. And that's in part of a valley. That's more, that's closer to Manitoba side. It's really pretty, <clears throat> really pretty. Yeah. 
like not everything's flat, right? Right. You know what? And let's experience some stuff. Did this hit you in Regina too? Like it did my community. I live in a, a community of 10,000 people. Okay. So a 10th of the population that is all women. So 1000 women joined in to do wine ninjas. And so they just ninjaed other women randomly that they did not know. I, to this day, still do not know who left this for me at my front door. So in turn, you ninja someone else. And we had a website and everybody was posting pictures of what they got. And it was awesome. And it was fun. It was, you know, not long after COVID hit and we were in isolation. And it just made things feel so much better. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. We have a wonderful community. I want to do a lot of camping with the ambulance. Oh, I got to bring that down. And what else? Oh, like RCMP we have museum. museum. The RCMP. I haven't toured that since I was a little kid. I want to do that again. It is phenomenal there. We have a huge training division for the RCMP where you live. And you know what? Ever since I was a kid, we lived farther north. My grandparents lived in Regina, and they'd always take us to the legislative building and see the rows of amazing flowers that they had. So that is definitely something that I want to get some pictures of. And we can all do this whether we're on lockdown or not. That's in my video this week. The ledge. Oh, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. So this picture, I got to tell you guys, I am so proud of the community that I live in. This is a picture dedicated to the prairie woman. And it's just recognizing the things that the women did when they were back in the homesteading times. And for those that don't know, a lot of the seniors that have already passed or are very old, if they lived on a farm, the way they did their taxes and stuff, Women didn't have any money come in in their old age, but the men did. And then when the men died, the women lost most of the income that they had, except for the bare minimum that the government would provide. And so many people didn't know that. And now families are doing things different, but it was just another example of how women were forgotten. And I just, this is all metal. It's beautiful at night. It's lit up gorgeous. So proud. And that brings me to the next statue. This one came first. If you can see in the back, we got the giant wheat statues. Do you see that? Yeah, I love that. You and can see that from the highway. From Douglas. Do you want to tell them who Tommy Douglas is? Oops. Oh, Tommy Douglas is, um, he was the first one that really uh, decided or actually thought up the whole idea of universal Medicare. He wanted, uh, an, he his dream was a place where you didn't have to sell the farm to get to get medical care. So where people could pool their money together and that the most urgent care could be gotten by sharing the money. It was a very um, kind of socialist, but a real, it's modern Medicare in Canada is based on the work of Tommy Douglas and his party. He was a very famous politician and a premier of the promise. And so not only are we proud of this fact because we're Canadian as well, but Tommy Douglas is from the community that I'm in. And we even have a little thing to uh, um, a wheel sort of mosaic wheel in our public library for him. We have this on our little boardwalk. It's one of those wonderful things to, to get to share with everybody that we are really a part of that history. That, that and you really know what's Oh, I'm sorry. That really started to happen in the 60s. Like when my husband was born, his parents had to pay, you know, for his birth at the hospital. But by the time I was born, I'm born nine months after my husband. Um, my parents, the cost of my birth was already covered by the province. So that yeah. was a pretty dramatic effect. Absolutely. And in, and I don't know what it's going to be like this year, but we have all sorts of different fairs and exhibitions in our province like any other I just got to bring this down so it clips across. Again, another picture of Tommy Douglas. And I'm going to see this. Do you know that this is in Saskatchewan? Have you seen these sand dunes, Karen? No, but uh, they're at, well, there's actually two sets. There's the ones that are up north at Lake Athabasca. And then there's the ones in the sand hills, which are just south of Outlook in Rosetown. They yeah. have a mini version of this. Which one are you talking about? Which one is this? The, the southern one is the one I'd heard of. 
Yeah, the sand hills. So that's something that you wouldn't imagine in Saskatchewan. Like we just have so many different subcultures, like biodomes, so to speak, within our, our province that it's just so neat to be able to see that and, and get to share that. Uh, Lots of deer in there. If you want to go deer hunting, that's where you want to go, the sand hills. <laughs> <laughs> deer elk moose antelope what do you want we got it and then you know i don't know if these are going to be open this is actually um oh i was thinking it's patash it's not it's fort carlton so we have a strong metis history in saskatchewan um with the louis riel resistance they've changed that name and so we have a lot of heritage sites that are set up i remember going to this one as an elementary student and everybody there acted like they were in that time and they were dressed in that time and it was fantastic and this, I have a video being here, but I didn't actually take video of the water. I love going to Watrous. This man is floating in salt water in the middle of Saskatchewan. It is the Dead Sea of Saskatchewan. Yes, it is. Oh my goodness, I just see I got a super chat. I was missing a lot of this. Did I miss any others? Thank you so much, Gina. Let me send you a thank you. Sorry, you guys. When I have those pictures up, I can't see the chat. I hope I didn't miss anybody else. You guys will have to let me know if I did. Thank you, Gina, so much for that. You're so kind. Oh, those are his toes. That was hard for me to tell. Those are his toes. I see his, his toes. toes and his belly and his arms. But you can float there without a floaty. Yeah. Like for real. It's it's the there's a big history on it, and I'm going to share some of that. Maybe Karen and I will each share that. There's the the dance hall where all the floor is made out of like horse hair. Um, yeah. There's a lot Dreamland. of really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. But the the water's therapeutic too. Like it actually heals a lot of skin conditions as well. And they do have a spa inside where the water is much warmer naturally. This mm -hmm. is cool because it's outside. Mm -hmm. And then there's, the, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> sorry. Moose Jaw has got that indoor spring that's heated from the earth, right? Yeah. It's just, that's just a half But an hour that's away. not the same mineral mm -hmm. qualities as, as, uh, Watrous. And in fact, in the spawn Watrous, the water used to be very brown looking and they've tried to filter it as much as they could, but it's au natural and it is very healing and it's been known that way since, yeah. you know, tribes were, were ra um, grazing across the province. For I remember being a little girl going there all the time and, and like, like begging our parents to take us back there because it was so fun just to float around in that lake. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Really and it really burns your eyes too. It does. Yeah. yeah. I think. Oh, and then, you know, there. if the casino is open, we got the casino Regina and Moose Jaw. The one in Regina actually is an old railroad. Um, uh, what do you call it, Karen? It used to be where you could catch the train. Mm -hmm. Train station. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the ones on the First Nations are gorgeous. Like, they are beautiful casinos. I'm going to maybe see the Rough Riders, watch a little football. Maybe watch a little hockey. I don't know. And I'm going to show you guys stuff like this. We have monuments all over Saskatchewan that are huge. But this is from Kipling, Saskatchewan. And this has a history online. Um, originally, someone went online and they started with a red paper clip. And they traded it for something and traded it and traded it and traded it. And it's got a really cool history of what was in those trades. And eventually, it became a house in Kipling, that is a little restaurant now that's really cute. So we're gonna show you some of those experiences, you know, maybe go to the parks and sit in the amphitheater and listen to some music, take in some hiking trails, maybe, you know, Saskatchewan, we like to throw rocks at houses, do a little <laughs> curling. <laughs> and if you don't know what curling is, you're not gonna understand the throwing rocks at houses. <laughs> that's beautiful. You know, we have a lot of cross-country skiing here. We do have downhill skiing. Again, the fishing. I miss fishing. This is a picture of my friend and her son, and she has an inflatable boat, and she bought a fishing motor, put it on the back so she could take her little five-year-old all around, and they fish along the shores, and it was just a brilliant idea. Yeah. We'll climb hay bales. Do you know what? I eventually had to get someone to help me up. Those break when you're trying to pull yourself up. <laughs> You have no idea how hard those are to climb. 
It's crazy. That's a great yeah. picture. I love it. Thanks. So those are some of the things I'm really looking forward to sharing everyone. That's just a quick synopsis of what my 2021 is going to be like. I do have some other pictures that Karen has brought in. And I just got to get it set up here. And then I can show the screen. Let me just check the chat for a minute. How much did I yeah. miss you guys? I think people are talking with each other. Yeah, I don't know if I actually missed anything for me. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging in there. This is going to be tons of fun when it actually comes out. So I'm going to share the screen now with some of the pictures that Karen has. And I'm going to let Karen explain them. And Karen, just let me know when to click next. Sure. Oh, <clears throat> so that's a, that's a picture um, I, I took on my way to work. Okay, so uh, we have a circle, a circle drive. It's called the Ring Road Goes Around the City. And uh, I took that when I was coming back into town on my way to work. So that was one nice. morning, a bunch of frost. Took that at my girlfriend's place in Ontario. She lives at um, just outside of Ottawa. She lives on a piece of property with a private road. And that was first thing in the morning, got up, planned that picture the night before. Um, I decided that I wanted to get the dew on the dew on the on the grass. And so uh, that's it's beautiful. A, oh, look at this. This is so Saskatchewan. Yeah, this is right at the Saskatchewan Montana border. This is just uh, just north of Turner, Man Turner, Montana. So uh, yeah, just classic, beautiful. Right night. after rain is what it looks like the sunshine after the rain. And it, it looks like, you know, I'm a YouTuber and I put all the presets on it. And it's not like that. Those are the colors that came through the camera. That's awesome. Ooh, uh, this, is Mon this, this is a uh, Montana. This is a lava flow in northern Montana, and it's been it's, you know that you can see where there's lava, and and now the the trees are the stunted trees are just starting to cover it. Not a lot of soil there. Uh, that's in southern Saskatchewan. That's canola. That's a canola field. So if you uh, uh, we have canola everywhere, and it blooms around July the first. If you want to take really good pictures with bright blue skies and yellow yellow fields uh, July 1st weekend is a good weekend to go out and uh, shoot pictures of the canola so that's um uh, rapeseed oil or canola canola oil that's what it's made out of canola plants hello chugalug Doug <laughs> this is so typical farm machinery on teeny tiny highways that's a, a Saskatchewan traffic jam <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. That's just north of Climax. And then this is uh, between Climax and Shaunavon. So there's actually a town called Climax. It's on the other side of the border from Turner, Montana. So uh, when you go over, so that's south of south of Swift Current. So between Shaunavon and Climax, that's, uh, that, that's the road that you hit when you first come into the province. Cool. This is uh, this Highway 33. This is between your house and mine. Mm -hmm. And this is taken uh, about the middle of October with a, just a light. To me, they look like mini wheats, you know, mini wheats with just a light dusting of uh, that white sugar icing on mini wheats. Do they have mini wheats in the U.S.? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Shredded wheat with icing on top? I don't know. I don't know. See, and that's the thing here. Mo a lot of our highways, ha our main highways actually have trains all along them. Oh, this is gorgeous. Where is this, Karen? Uh, just when I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget because I want to make sure I said this is in Virginia. Uh, On one of your trips? Yeah. Uh, this is called the Long Branch Plantation in Virginia. And we show dogs there. So oh. uh, in one of those Oh, and one of those pastures on to, off to the side. We showed dogs there. But that was our drive in and out of the plantation every day. It was beautiful. Jeff, that's fantastic. Oh, look at land of the living skies. So this is taken about Lang, Saskatchewan. So again, this is on Highway 39 between my house and yours. Mm -hmm. On a different highway between my house and yours. There's a couple ways to get to your house. But yeah, that's flat, flat and um, beautiful skies. Uh, and... Uh, the reason uh, the reason why it's so flat in our area is because it's actually the basin of a glacial lake. 
And so when the, when the, I'm using my hands, when the glaciers were melting, they pooled in a lake. And so we have lots of sedimentary levels, layers, and it's mm -hmm. really, really flat. So that's why. And, and when you get to the sand hills, that's like one edge of the lake. And when you get to closer to where Paula lives and closer to Pipestone and places like that, that's the Missouri Coteau. And that's the other edge of that glacial lake. So, oh yeah, you're going to have a geologist coming with you. Oh, uh, this like is northern, Mon northern Montana, just south of Saskatchewan. And that's the sun is setting. And it was just like we had to stop the truck and take pictures because it's that is just classic big sky and fiery sunset. That's um, that's in June. I was taken in June. I think we got another one. Yeah, uh, that is that's Wishart, Saskatchewan. And so that is and, and that is. That's uh, that's Wishart, Saskatchewan. It's uh, uh, it's north of north of Regina, pretty much close, even with Saskatoon. This is taken in southern Ontario. This is around where where Lance from Boondocking with Boomer. This is closer yeah. to his, place, and this is on Highway Number One. Oh, there's an ambulance down there. You're following. Oh, there you See. go. <laughs> But that's what our skies can look like. And we do get tornadoes here as well on the prairies. And there is proof. There is a climax, Saskatchewan. They have camping, a museum, swimming in a library, and a little medical center by the signs underneath. Climax, Saskatchewan. We'll take you guys to climax this summer. <laughs> oh, look at this. So this is at Turner, Montana. This is just south of the border. This is uh, putting the dogs out one last time for a, a rest. So how many miniature schnauzers in that picture? Eight? One, two, three, four, two, five, six, seven, eight, I think. And then yeah. two Scottish Terriers, the two black dogs on the left side, Scottish Terriers, one, two, three, seven. So there, So now, I don't know if you have the picture of our big van. I don't know. I have it in there somewhere. Do I have it in yeah. order? Yep. Oh, there, there's a, we have a big van now. <laughs> But that last picture is when we had our little van. So we had a little van and oh my God. So we were just coming back from um, um, one of the American national specialties in Long Beach, California on that trip. And so it was June. And that's when I talk about going through uh, Las Vegas and going through Nevada when it's like 110 and 115 and we're trying to keep everything cool. So um, mm -hmm. that's just, uh, so that's why I really got interested in van life. I wanted to know how do we keep ourselves comfortable how do we how do we live inside this van and and uh make it make sense so that we could be super comfortable i've learned so much from this community and i'm really really grateful because you and the dog stay in there when you're on the road right yes that's right yeah but they're all tucked away they're not loose oh is this hoover that. dam yes it is yeah it's hoover dam and so, so it's you and your honey yes yeah that's my husband gord at, and we we had a really good time. So that was, uh, and that's my husband as well. And that's taken on uh, Vancouver Island. And so that's on the on the west coast. So I think Port Renfrew is, is the name of that community. It's beautiful there. So, oh, oh that's an old picture. That's, um, uh, we, are, we are still dating. We're still very, very young. That's more than 30 years ago. That's my husband and myself. So he's- That uh, is such a sweet picture. Yeah. So again, outdoorsy. And uh, and this is my husband's project. Uh, he has, he's built a rat rod and uh, it's it's out of a Chevy van. And it's, we have a lot of fun with that. That's at a car show this last summer. And that's Mark. another thing that we can do in Saskatchewan too, is hit up a couple car shows. Oh, I think we'll be going to car shows for sure. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Oh, oh, I gotta make this bigger. Yeah. Can you read that? It says, people think all Canadians are lumberjacks, which isn't true. A lot of us play hockey instead. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, so do people I. People think it's a straight line, but success is all over the place. <laughs> and that's going to be like our journeys this year. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you guys come along for the adventure because I'm. we're not sure what's going to happen yet. Oh, now there's a few pictures I'm going to quickly zip through, but are these you painting them? Oh, it's my husband. My, wow. husband is, my husband's an artist. So that's like probably my favorite bird, a meadow lark, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, That's, he's he's so good. Yeah, he's uh, he's amazing. I I just I have such a great life. I'm just so blessed. Oh, this is this <laughs> this, this is, is one Karen. Of the dogs show. Huh? Now this, this is Karen stuff. <laughs> yeah. So and yes, Kathleen, we we well, no, we don't have to go past Moose Jaw to get some moose milk, but we should, Karen. We should buy some moose milk in Moose Jaw just because of the irony of it all. I think that's a great day trip. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Do a video. So, we'll tell them they're coming. Now, you have had some amazing success with your dogs. Just let me know when to click pictures. And I know you don't know the order they're in, but. <laughs> so this is my girlfriend's dog. And you know that I have Scottish Terriers and they have beards and cute ears and cute tails. And so my girlfriend, she breeds giant schnauzers. And um, I, she's, she has limited mobility. She has some real mobility problems. And so she wanted him to be shown. And so I was practicing with him and I said, well, you have to let me show this dog. He's beautiful. We're going to win best in shows. Like he's going to be the number one in the country. He's so beautiful. And he was <laughs> like, we, we won a ton of stuff with him. I, we trained him, but that's another thing, two years of training. And then he becomes an overnight sensation. But this dog, mm -hmm. his name's Sarah. He's just beautiful beautiful dog i love him so much we have a comment does your husband have a channel maybe teaching how to paint there everyone's like whoa he's so talented yeah yeah he's a he's a he's i don't know maybe you can see it on my face he's just amazing we've we've just you know had this wonderful 30 year plus marriage of just you know uh like he's all behind me you want to do youtube yeah okay that sounds like fun you want to do um those are copper plate etchings. That's a whole other yeah. story of copper plate etching, but um, uh, that he's doing. So he's just coloring in an etching that he's done. Uh, this That's is awesome. a, so this is Annie. This is a, a, a dog, a dog I bred. Um, she was a top 20 Scotty in the U S and I was only there five, five weekends in one year and I was still one of the top 20 Scotties in the US and that's when I probably the first year where I thought oh I want to show in the US more I want to spend more time in America showing dogs and so mm -hmm. she's pretty special and you dog. guys the reason we're showing she's some of this now, is to but... show how much traveling Karen has done and how much you guys are gonna see through her channel so if you haven't um subbed to Prairie Life I do have the link in the description below but there's gonna be a lot of really good stuff and I think next Wednesday I'm going to showcase some of my previous travels my tropical trips but um I'll just continue on I just want people to know this is like some of the amazing skills that you have thank you very much um this is a dog actually this dog's laying in my lap right now she insisted she needed to come up and spend this time with me so this is river in california now river you need to be six months old to be a show dog and river is six months old and three or four days like barely old enough to be at the show and um she won she won all of the points there she was best of winners um, the judge liked her so much that she gave her an award of merit. Um, that's at California. That's at the show by Santa Anita. Um, that judge, you would know that judge if you watch best, if you watch Westminster, she's, uh, she's won Westminster a couple of times with her Norfolk Terriers, like little tiny dogs that folded up like little terriers. She's won a couple of times. She knows terriers really well. She just, she just loved my little dog. Super hot day, super great win. Let's go to the next picture. Oh, there's Sarah winning a reserve best in show. His very first weekend out. We are very happy. Look at the teeth on that dog. He like, I just guide him along. I just hope that the leash stays loose, that I anticipate what he's gonna do and guide him, kind of will him with my mind and my body because he, <sighs> He could just do whatever he wanted to do, but he's uh he's just a really sound, smart dog. We we're a good team. Wow. Um, that's at uh, the American Nationals. That's a dog named Agnes. How do you like that specialty select bitch? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, specialty select yeah. bitch. So well, I guess was, that's uh, the exact meaning of it. Yeah, female it, it, dog. Yeah. So she was uh. So the, sh the specialty was won by a male dog. And so she was the first runner up at the specialty. So that was at the American Nationals. She's a, she was born right here. She's a granddaughter of the Annie dog. 
Uh, this is the mother, uh, Agnes's mother. This is at the American Nationals, and this is in Pennsylvania. This is close to King of Prussia and Valley Forge in Pennsylvania. Um, it's at a place called Ambler, Ambler, Pennsylvania. So uh, just north of Philadelphia. Uh, she's winning um, uh, winners, winners at the American National. All wow. the <gasps> Oh, this is pickles. This is pickles at the. American. Oh, I meant pickles. Pickles yeah. is so sweet. Yeah. This is pickles in Denver. Uh, pickles winning the sweepstakes at the Denver Specialty. It was the weekend of the national. She's beautiful. I love. I love her so much. She's out of Agnes's sister. Is her mother. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that exploring the West Coast. That's true. There are SPCA's yeah. all over that are filled with sweet dogs and neat homes. So. And that's Absolutely. another thing during this whole COVID is I got dogs gifted to me. <laughs> so that was, they do bring great joy. And this was a really good hobby for you too. Yeah. Well, it was more like and, a job. And uh, what, what I do you know, think? if you work with a reputable breeder and somebody that is only breeding dogs that there is a home for, um, it's a very different world than the dogs that are at the SPCA. And, um, mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not against SPCAs. I think they're really valuable and I contribute a great deal of money to them. Um, but uh, it's not, they're not opposites and they're not, they're not yes or no. They're just part of a continuum. This is mm -hmm. a family photo. This is um, uh, I, uh, the mother and the father and three dogs. Um, it's a long story, but anyway. Bunch this of is a whole family? Yeah, so the woman in purple, uh, she owns a father and she lives in Texas. And then I'm there, I've got Agnes. And then that's my friend from, from uh, Ottawa. She's in Burgundy. She has a sister named Spirit. And then um, the lady with the short auburn hair, she's got another sister. She lives in Maryland. She actually has the mother, that dog there is the mother of Pickles. And then the lady at the end of it has my Sophie dog. And uh, she's from Texas. I think they take after the mother. <laughs> they do. They do. They'll look so much to me. I I don't know the differences, right? So <laughs> this and is my this is, one. This is my friend Tom. He's become a really close friend now. Um, he's um he's he's from America, and he's judging at the Canadian National, and that's it was in Ontario, and that's uh, Agnes is winning the Canadian Nationals. So that's awesome. the same one that was, first, and this is Agnes at the American National. Yeah, Aww. and this is um, this is this is a dog doing agility. So uh, this is Annie doing agility. Yeah, I think we're just about done with the yes. Oh, and this is them as babies. Yeah, our little teddy bear dogs. So oh, anyway, that is so cute. And what is this though? This is like a huge award. It's a Stanley. It's a Stanley Cup of Airedale Airedale Terriers. The Stanley wow. Cup. Every dog that's oh, this is my first solo trip. This is when I first figured out that I could travel solo. It's 2010. Um, I drove to um, Oregon by myself to pick up a dog. Thank you so much for sharing those pictures with us and getting to show a little bit of insight into you and a lot of different things that we're going to see on the channel. We I just want to thank you all. I want to wish you all much love. Stay warm, stay healthy, stay safe.